This one will be looking at some examples of um, real Verilog modules, so modules that actually uh, do something. Um, so if you haven't seen lecture four, um, watch that one before you watch this one, because um, in that one, we discussed the basic structure of a Verilog module. Uh, the fact that the module is the basic um, kind of building block in Verilog, in, in a sense, um, it's hierarchical, so you can instantiate other modules within modules. Um, so go back to watch that one if you haven't seen that one yet. Um, but in, th in this video, we'll have a look at some examples of real Verilog modules. Of course, we'll start. Uh, we'll start simple, um, but this is just to get the general picture. Um, so let's have a look at this one. So this one is called uh, blank mod. Okay. So just like any other um, Verilog module, you have the keyword module. You have the name of the module, which in this case I've called it blank mod. Um, you have the port list. So A, B, uh, A is an input wire, and B is an output wire. Um, if you like, we can represent this module as a, as a box, and we have the input as A, and then the output as B. Um, now, there's not actually any logic in this module. This is why I've called it blank mod. So there's absolutely nothing going on within this module okay there's no um, hardware there's no logic gates there's no flip-flops um, but this one was just to get us started so uh, you know we understand the basic structure of the module so um, let's move forward to a module that actually has something within it so this one is called invert mod uh, it's a very simple module perhaps the, the most simple module that you can get um, and it's just an inverter. Okay, so um, so we have the basic structure of the module. Again, we have one input called A, one output called B, um, except this time we've instantiated a, um, a not gate, which is an inverter. And we have the output is B and the input is A. Uh, and this is what it would look like within the module. Uh, now, I just wanted to show a, a, a different way of doing this because one of the things I mentioned in uh, lectures two and three is that we want to move away from instantiating logic gates and towards behavioral modeling. Uh, later on, when things get more complex, behavioral modeling will make things much, much easier. Um, so I'm going to show you a different way of implementing this simple module okay so this one i've kept the name as invert mod uh, but this time we've used an assign statement um, and we've got a blocking assignment here and it's just saying b is equal to uh, the tilde symbol in Verilog means uh, not so b is equal to uh, not a so that will actually give you exactly the same as the first one, which was using a, um, a, a, a not gate. Um, so that is um, a very simple module. Let's make things a bit more complex. This one is called invert mod two. Uh, so we ha again, we have an input called A, an output called B. There is a difference in this module, okay, because now we have an internal wire, okay, that's connecting uh, this inverter to the second inverter. Um, and as, as uh, Verilog programmers, we're responsible for declaring this wire, okay, and in this case, you can see within the module, I've declared uh, a wire called C. So that would be this wire here connecting the two uh, gates. Uh, so I have two assign statements. The first one is assign um, C, that would be at this point, is equal to not A. And then the second one is assign B, 
is equal to not C. Um, now, if you did this in a, an actual Verilog module, the compiler would probably just remove these two gates and just give you a straight line because effectively that's what it is. Okay, if you go from zero to one and then one to zero, then you, you always end up back to what you started with. So the compiler would um, basically not synthesize this if, if you try to get it. Uh, but this is just a, an example of, of, of a simple Verilog module with an internal wire. Um, so bear in mind now that these are very simple Verilog modules, they get much more complex than this. Um, in the next video, I'll look at maybe a slightly more complex Verilog module. We'll, we'll start introducing the, the wire and the reg data type. And we'll start looking as well at the difference between a blocking assignment, which is the one that we've used here, and a non-blocking assignment. Um, there's, you know, there, there's a very subtle but important difference between those two types of assignment. Uh, but hopefully by now, you're starting to uh, become familiar with what a Verilog module looks like. Um, and this would be a good foundation now to start talking about some of the more advanced uh, topics in Verilog. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll end that one here and I'll see you in the next video.